All right, hey, how's it going? My name is Ryan Caswell, Master Chef here at B2Bleads.com. And today we're gonna to be talking about the perfect LinkedIn outbound messages. Now, this is a really um, interesting topic and one that a lot of people really struggle with. And the, the beauty of this is, is a lot of people do such a terrible job with this that it's really not that hard to stand out from the crowd on LinkedIn and actually generate really great results. Now, a lot of people um, feel that LinkedIn messaging doesn't work or um, they get a lot of uh, annoying spammy messages on LinkedIn and it sort of put a bad taste in their mouth. But like I said, because people do such a bad job of it, it really is quite easy to stand out from the crowd and do a much better job and actually drive really great results. Now, LinkedIn has made a few changes recently that limit the amount of messages that you can actually send per day. I dropped it down to about 100 per week. It used to be, well, it used to be eventually, a long time ago, 100 uh, a day. But this has actually been great. I've seen a much better pickup and engagement because there's a lot less messages going out and it forces you to be a lot more careful um, and tailored with your messaging and your audience. So it's been really positive and, um, and it's really improved um, the results in terms of, like I said, when you have the right messaging. So I wanna talk about what to do when it comes to LinkedIn messages. So there's a few key things that people tend to always get wrong. Now, unfortunately, like most of the things I talk about, there's no one exact formula. It all depends on your industry, what you're selling, who your audience is. It depends on a lot of different things. But there are core concepts or ideas that we do need to hit that tend to be very effective um, no matter what. So first thing I'll say is, well, in terms of an actual messaging sequence, it doesn't, it's not really that complicated. There's many ways you can go about it, but essentially what we're trying to do is take someone who doesn't know us through to the point where they trust us enough to jump on a call with us. And this person, we can find them on LinkedIn, they don't know us. We can reach out to connect and then we can aim to engage with them. And the way, the easiest way to do that is to send a message once someone's actually connected with you, um, possibly a series of messages, not too many, and space them out over the course of say a month or so. And then once you do, once you get engagement, you then need to nurture that. And then that obviously then turns into a phone call. In an ideal world, and this certainly does happen, you reach out to connect with someone, it all makes perfect sense to them. They have the problem, they have the need, they see they trust you, and they jump straight to a call. But for the most part, you generally have to um, go through engagement, um, nurturing, and then obviously getting them onto a call through a longer period. Everyone's different, um, and it obviously depends, but we wanna make sure that we have the best chance of getting um, everyone onto calls who we feel we can help and actually has the need. So the first thing we need to do is connect. And then what I'm gonna to focus today on today is that initial engagement. So essentially, someone connects with you, you send a message, you convince them to connect on LinkedIn, and then you drip feed a series of messages. I wouldn't do more than three over say the course of a month. I won't get into the exact timing. Uh, it's not super important. Um, but I will say space it out. So a lot of people will connect with someone and then just blast them with message after message after message one day at a time. If they're not interested today, chances are they're probably not interested tomorrow. The same um, thing that's keeping them busy is likely, very likely to be keeping them busy tomorrow. But if you space it out a week or even two weeks, you've now hit them at a completely different point um, and um, you, they've got more of a chance and you're not hammering them like over and over and over and just annoying them. So that's what I'll say about in terms of um, spacing it out. But in terms of what to actually write in your messages, first thing first, and this is where most people get it wrong, get people to connect with you based on the value you can bring. Most people on LinkedIn will reach out and they do these kind of I'll say scammy ways to get people to connect. Hey, LinkedIn said we should be friends or um, I see you in your feed a lot or I like your post or I think you're doing great things. And you know, you're not fooling anyone. They, they know you're not reading their profiles and um, checking them out and, and loving them and whatnot. So it's really important 
that we get people to connect with us for the right reasons and that's the value that we can bring. And if you're actually upfront and understand and know how to frame your value, um, you're gonna have a lot more success, not just in terms of connection rate and even if your connection rate is lower, it doesn't matter because you've now set the tone of the conversation. So if you get people to connect with you based on your value, at least we know that when people connect now, they have an interest in what we're doing and it gives us a lot more of a leg to stand off when we start asking them if that's something they're interested in and then framing the conversation to move that towards a call. So um, I'm sure I have some templates of what you can use on, uh, on my website for actual messages. But in essence, what you wanna say is, hey, this is what we do, or this is what I do. Um, I'm really good at it. If you are interested, let's connect. But obviously it depends on what you actually do and what you're framing and what you have available. Um, maybe you can reference some big companies that you work with. Uh, you only have 300 characters, so there's not a lot of space to say much. And that's a really good thing because it forces you to get to the point. But the idea is we want people to connect based on value because that's gonna set the tone of the conversation moving forward. And if they don't have interest in it, then really um, we don't, it's probably not a good fit for us anyway. And we want to qualify and find the people who um, have interest in what we do and who we can actually help. So the next thing to focus on, another thing that people get wrong, short, keep the messages short, three to five sentences max. People, like I said, connect for the wrong reason. And then as soon as someone connects, blast them with like a three page um, bloody um, pitch. And not only is it effective, it annoys people. So um, you really wanna keep your messages short and you don't wanna to talk too much about, you don't wanna to give too much away. You wanna drive curiosity. You wanna give people a reason to engage with you. So you don't wanna be sending links and guides and um, all the information about everything that you do. You really want some reason for people to have to engage with you. Because when someone engages with you, and that might just be a reply, a yes or no, or whatever it is. When someone engages with us, it gives us information about who we should focus our efforts on nurturing. Because nurturing is gonna be a huge part of this. Like I said, some people will jump straight on a call, but nurturing is where most people leave money on the table. And by driving some form of engagement and not giving too much away and driving some sort of curiosity, it gives people a reason to want to engage with us. And when people engage with us, then we know who we need to uh, engage with and focus our nurturing efforts on further. And one other really important thing with your messages is focus on one thing per message. One, one maybe max two, one call to action. If you start saying, hey, you can do this, you should do this, check this out, um, all these different actions that you want someone to take, you're now giving them too many actions and too many decisions causes inaction rather than action. So what's the main thing we want them to do and just finish with that. But that's the good thing about keeping it short is it's hard to drive too many things. Now, there's a lot of ideas about the best way to get leads or generate leads and get them onto phone calls. There's a lot of talk about, and, and this has worked well in the past and it still does, is you're reaching out to people. A lot of people say, look, why would someone want to jump straight on a call with you? So it, it's better to add value to those people um, to get them to trust you, to get them on a call. And you can add value in, in a lot of different ways. You can add value through, um, you know, guides, eBooks, um, webinars, things like that. The problem is, is, all right, so we've got someone who doesn't know us yet and we want to get them to a phone call. And the reason we want to get to a phone call is there's so much that goes on in an actual human interaction. So many forms of communication far beyond can be possibly done on a PDF guide or something. And people will now anchor the things they see later to an actual human being. And people build trust with human beings, not with objects, not with brands. Even the biggest brands in the world, people still generally try to connect that to a human being. It's just in our nature. So we want people to get to a call. We need to establish trust to do that. We can do things like send PDF guides um, or webinars are good because they can actually see a human being talking and communicating. The problem with just purely offering a guide is people may say yes, but it's not a strong enough touch point 
most times, and most people aren't good enough at writing um, one of these guides, that it rarely actually turns into anything. It hasn't built a strong enough relationship. That's not to say that offering a guide or some sort of resource isn't valuable, but there are, and I'm finding this more and more these days with the amount of people that just send guides and you know, ebook this, ebook that, there is an increasing number of people who just wanna have a human conversation with someone. Now, if we've got them to connect with us based on our value, then if we can find out that they actually have an interest in what we do or they have the problem, then it sets us up to position a call, a quick chat, not a, a strategy session or whatever um, the latest thing is. It's literally just a quick chat, a meet and greet to actually build some kind of rapport and relationship. And that can lead into sales calls. But at this initial point in the, um, I'll say relationship, there's just not enough trust established to, to go into anything too in depth. And people are too careful with their time to want to book anything more than say a few minutes. So it gives us the position to offer a call or a quick chat so we can share and actually offer tailored advice. But if they're not interested in doing that straight away or they're not going to engage um, initially, then we have the op option to offer things like resources, um, webinars, um, things like that. But I would strongly recommend not to only focus on the educational arm because you tend to lose a lot of those really strong leads who just haven't got time to read things. They just want to talk to a human being and find out if you can add value to them quickly. So in summary, um, I could go on and on about this all day. I'll put, um, I'll include a link or something to some message templates that'll get you started. Like I said, it's there's no one perfect formula for every single industry and every single um, service. But one thing that is always really important, get people to connect with you for your value, not just for connection sake. Keep your messages short, conversational. Don't give too much away. Um, you wanna drive some sort of curiosity that gets people to wanna to engage with you and focus on one thing in a message at a time. Don't give people too many options because you end up getting people taking no action rather than action. So I hope you've enjoyed this recipe for the LinkedIn outbound messages, how to generate more leads on LinkedIn. Really powerful stuff. I've used it to help hundreds of businesses with their lead generation using LinkedIn and our email and outbound methods. So if you'd like to learn more, feel free to head to b2bleads.com uh, as always, I'm Ryan Caswell from b2bleads.com and have a great day. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching. Of course, you can always learn more at b2bleads.com. And of course, a like, a subscribe, all that usual stuff really helps the channel out a long way. So thanks again. Hope you enjoyed and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.